Well, hello. Welcome to another episode of That Vid Blaster Guy. I'm Tom Sinclair, coming to you from our studios in the eastern shore of Alabama, right on Mobile Bay. Lovely spot. People think about Alabama and they think, oh, Alabama, you know, that's in the deep south. Well, we're actually down here on the Gulf Coast, so it's kind of different down here. Uh, it's, a, it's a mecca, as it were, a little town called Fairhope, nestled on Mobile Bay. But glad to have you with us live today. Glad to have you with us uh, if you're watching us on YouTube. We sure hope you'll pop in for a live show one day. We got the chat room rolling and a bunch of folks in there. Thanks for tuning in. Got people from all over the U.S. and uh, Australia. And generally, we have some folks in from from Europe, but they haven't haven't rung in yet. Perhaps they will as as the show goes on. Uh, one of the themes behind this show is that one guy with one PC can really do an awesome broadcast. And we've been working on that concept since July of 2012 and keep getting, you know, it, it's like anything else. It's two steps forward, one step back. Some days you feel like you're going back three steps. And there are always issues. Uh, I remember the time when Microsoft put out an update that killed off, of all, killed off all sorts of video cams that they just stopped working. And uh, you know, it took a while to figure out what update it was and, and uninstall it. But you just never know what each day is going to bring. Never know. We're actually battling some audio difficulties. So if, if you hear things kind of clicking in and out, it's probably me. About the uh, summer of 2013, had a motherboard start to go bad. And it went bad over the course of four or five weeks. And it, the first symptoms were kind of some pops and clicks in the audio, so I'm beginning to wonder if, if that's not the culprit here. It, but just because it happened one way one time doesn't mean that's the way it's going to happen every time. Full disclosure, I'm a VidBlaster reseller, so if you're interested in purchasing VidBlaster, you can go to our store at thatvidblasterguy.com and, and buy the program. If you'd like help with an upgrade, we can do that too. And if you need to consult with somebody on how to put your show together and whether VidBlaster is the right choice for you, then uh, by all means, you know, shoot us an email, tom at that vidblasterguy.com. Be happy to help you with that. Um, no charge. I mean, no charge for the help. Let's put it that way. And if you bought, bought VidBlaster from somebody else, some other, some other place, and you're not getting the support you think you need, uh, you can buy a support package from us either for a you know, one-shot deal, one problem, or for a whole year. Uh, that's in our store, too, at thatvidblasterguy.com. So we hope you'll take a look at that. Um, to ding a smorgasbord, we're going we're gonna to divide the, two, the show into two segments. One is going to be posted uh, on YouTube immediately today. The, other, the second segment will be posted probably on Friday. The first segment is going to be Vidblaster Pacific. The second segment will be uh, kind of our new spinoff spin called uh, Streaming Idiots. And that was going to be a lot of fun. Today on Streaming Idiots, we're going to do Encoder Wars. So uh, you'll want to stick around. If you're watching live, you'll want to stick around for that one. And if you're watching this on YouTube, tune back in on Friday. We'll have it uh, uploaded then. But today, we wanted to cover a few things about VidBlaster. The current trial, ver or excuse me, the current uh, beta version is version 3.21. And that's available at the VidBlaster forum. That's forum.vidblaster.com. And you can download the trial version and use it for as long as you like. It has a little watermark in there. But other than that, it's a fully functional version. It's equivalent to the Studio Edition, which is the second from the top edition. The, um, one of the modules, VidBlaster's really cool because it uses modules. And so you can use what you need and don't use what you don't need. But one of the modules is called the Output Module. We, last week's show, we talked about that quite a bit. So if you uh, are interested in output, go back and watch that show. But one of the things I forgot to cover is how the output module works with other encoders. Remember, VidBlaster doesn't, doesn't have an encoder built into it like Wirecast or vMix. It counts on the presence of Flash Media Live encoder in the background or any other software encoder that you might choose to use in the foreground. And the way you get the video out of VidBlaster is with the output module. 
And let me throw up a quick screen capture here. It won't take but just a second. That's one of the things I love about VidBlaster is it doesn't, doesn't take very long to throw up a capture. Uh, this is a capture of the output module, and you see it's kind of going, going to infinity, but that's the outline of the output module right there, and it's taking the program as its source, and it's sending it to the VidBlaster VVD as its destination. And in today we're using Wirecast as our streamer, and so in Wirecast we select VidBlaster VVD as the video source. And that's how we get video into Wirecast. And then we pick up our audio in Wirecast straight from the mixer. So the other choices that we have here, and I'm not going to select them because Wirecast would go nuts, um, is I can send the video output to my right-hand display or my left-hand display. I have three monitors set up, but we're going to leave it on VVD so we don't, uh, so we don't lose our stream. And that's how, I mean, that's it. That's, that's all there is to it. That's how you send the video out to another encoder, is to set up the output module to program, and then uh, select the Vid, VidBlaster VVD as your destination. And so that'll send the video out to that virtual video device. And you can select that as the video device or the webcam or the video source, whatever it's called in the software uh, encoding software of your choice. Um, and we're going to talk more about encoding in the second segment today. It, uh, it, it's really a neat way to do it. I kind of like the flexibility of having it appear as a webcam, and it'll work in, in almost any software that expects to have a webcam, like uh, GoToMeeting or Adobe Connect or that kind of stuff you can hook up the VidBlaster VVD with that. Now, one limitation is that the output module is not present in the home edition. Uh, so if you're buying the home edition thinking that you can connect to uh, you know, Adobe Connect or something like that, um, the output module is not there. The, the old streamer module, which I say old streamer module, it's the only streamer module, but the streamer module could be set to uh, a virtual video device, and that may or may not work in some of that other software. Uh, so VidBlaster essentially has two virtual video devices. One of them is in the streamer, one of them is in the output module, but not everybody has an output module. So if you've got the home edition, you don't have an output module. So I want to make that uh, really clear. One of the things that um, that Mike Verstig, the developer of VidBlaster, has done to help us determine if our home computers are powerful enough is develop a little piece of software called the VidBlaster Benchmark. And the Benchmark allows, you can download it from the forum, and the Benchmark you can run on your PC and it will score your PC and tell you how you're doing. Now the Benchmark is still kind of under in development, I think if you go to forum.vidblaster.com and go to the hardware section, you'll find the, the benchmark there. I didn't have time to put a URL together. Um, yeah, forum.vidblaster.com and then go to the, the hardware section. You can download. There were two versions of the benchmark, um, version 1 and version 1.01. 1.01 is the latest and actually has several different tests you can run, including a test on the, uh, the GPU. So the, the lower the score, the better. Uh, this PC that I'm using for streaming today is an i7-2600K, not overclocked in any way. Um, I, I think it's 8 gigs of RAM um, and a, a, a Radeon, uh, a AMD Radeon HD 5570 video card that's going out to three monitors. It scored about a, uh, what was it? I've got it right here. It scored a, a 13 on the, um, the, the what they call the classic benchmark multi-core. Um, and depending on how I ran the test, I got between a 13 and a 16, which is, which is good. Uh, the, the lowest I've heard on that one, I think, was a 12. So you will want to check your PC and see how you do. Um, if you're getting up in the, if you're, if you're running the classic or the classic multi and you're up in the 60s or 70s, it's probably not going to work. But 
if you get some results, send them to me, Tom, at that bibblasterguy.com, and you know maybe we can figure out some ways how to tweak your system and make it do better. You know, one of the tweaks is to go in and to set the performance rating, um, and to set the performance tweak that I do to all the all the PCs that that I build. Um, let's see. Let's talk about. Oh, that's right. Wanted to talk about the uh, Vid Blaster, a new feature in Vid Blaster. It's come out in the last couple of months, called the Playout Server. Playout server. The playout server replaces the old playlist in version two. Now, a playlist is simply a, a, a place where you can put in a list of video files, and VidBlaster will play those files one after another sequentially until it's done. And that was that was really pretty cool. I mean, basically, you could you could run um, videos for as long as you wanted if you were doing a twenty four seven show of some kind. Now with the new Playout controller, you can do the same thing, but you have the ability to do more. You can, um, well, that's, what's the best way to describe this? You can use the API in VidBlaster to control the controller. You can use the controller to start macros. You can use macros to start the controller. And so it becomes it it becomes more like programming in the, the the computer language sense of programming as opposed to the the uh, TV or, or radio station sense of programming. It becomes more programming and telling things to do different things at different times depending on the outcome of other things. Um, boy, was that as confusing to you as it was to me? I don't even think I understood that. Anyway. There's great discussion. The, the whole purpose of bringing up this discussion is that there is a great discussion about how this will look in VidBlaster going on in the VidBlaster forum right now. So if you go to forum.vidblaster.com and go to the feature request section, you can read on the development of this module and see how it's going. Currently, it's kind of hit a little bit of a... Um, what would you call it, a lull? You know, when you're out sailing and all of a sudden the wind dies, you're in a lull? Well, this, the development of this has hit a lull because the developer needs some input from people that have used similar functions like this in a, in a professional environment. You know, the, the whole idea of VidBlaster is not necessarily to recreate the wheel, well, unless you can make it better, but to put the wheel in a single software package like VidBlaster that's really affordable and really powerful, yet simple at the same time. So if you are out there and you've got some experience either in radio or TV of doing this kind of playlist, play out kind of function, do us a favor and pop on the forum and, and read up on that. If you're not a licensed user, you might not be able to post, but if you'll send me an email, I can post it on your behalf and or maybe you know find a way to get you in there where you've got posting privileges. Um, the, uh, there's part of the forum that's set up for, for non-licensed individuals where they can come and get help, and then there's another part of the forum that's set up for licensed folks to, to, uh, to have conversations, so it's kind of creating a, a little bit of a wall there between folks that are just starting out and maybe don't even own the software yet and haven't even sure if they want to choose VidBlaster, and then those that have been VidBlaster users uh, for a while and are you know discussing different kinds of things, how they would implement different kinds of functions at different times. So that's that's one of the ways that that you can help VidBlaster if you have knowledge in that area. Um, there are lots of folks like me that I don't come from a broadcasting background. I'm just here as a, well, I'm just a dad that liked to take pictures of his kids playing soccer, and then pictures went into a website, and then that came into video, and then we wanted to find out how to do live video, and that's how I got into this whole broadcasting thing, and then I realized, golly, this is so simple. Anybody can do it with almost, not really, but almost any kind of equipment that they've got hanging around. They probably got a camera in the closet and a PC back in the study that will work for all of this stuff. 
Uh, you wouldn't believe all the stuff that I used to haul out to the soccer stadium at the very beginning, just boxes and boxes of, basically I'd tear down my studio and then haul it all out there and rebuild it. Now we, we can do it in a laptop. It's, it's a lot easier and a lot more fun. But I digress. Um, the idea is that, that you can bring something to the table and help Fit Blaster be better. And a lot of folks have had some good input, um, but we need some more. Some more in, in particular on this playout controller. I have an idea that this is going to be a, a really, really cool feature. I mean, it, it already is a cool feature, but it's not mature yet. And one of the things that I'd love to see is I'm going to be a star like the guys that do Computers 2K Now on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock Eastern, computers2know.com. Amnon and Mike and Spence and Bruce and those guys have been doing this show for, for years, literally years, and they have got it going on. They know what they're doing. And they've got so much content over the years that now they're streaming 24-7 all their content. So you can go hear these tech guys. Now, they're old tech guys, but that's okay. They still know their stuff despite their advanced years. They, uh, they, they know their stuff, and... You can, you can hear them 24-7 because Amnon has got enough programs in the can to make it worthwhile streaming 24-7 when he's not streaming live. Now, he's got other shows that he streams live, and obviously he interrupts the 24-7 interrupts the stream with the live stream. But the concept is you, too, can get your content out there on a, a, a casual viewer basis. So if somebody tunes into your channel... They don't have to go through and select one of your videos on demand to watch. There's something there playing, boom, when they get there. Yeah, if they've got something in mind that they want to go look at, they can, they can go find it and, and you know, abandon that, that live feed. I mean, it's not live. It's recorded, but it's being live streamed. Uh, another good example of that is uh, Stephen Haywood over at the Tech Buzz. If you catch the Tech Buzz at a time when he's not broadcasting a live show, He's, he's replaying other shows. There's a cool feature that at this point I haven't seen anybody doing except with the real high-end, multi-thousand dollar software, and that is the ability when they're streaming this pre-recorded content to actually put in um, overlays that would say, hey, you know, the little overlay here on the side like you might see on USA, something like that, that would say, hey, coming up uh, in 30 minutes is such and such a show. Well, one of my hopes for the playout controller is that you'll be able to embed in the playlist, you know, as you've got item one, item two, item three, item four, embed in the playlist a command that reads the amount of time left in the current file and says, hey, with 15 minutes left in this file, I'm going to play this overlay and it's going to go on the screen for 30 seconds and then it's going to go off. And then with 10 minutes left in the show, same thing happens. Five minutes left in the show, same thing happens. Two minutes left, another one pops up that says, stay tuned, next is. And you've got the ability, if you've got folks that are watching, to keep them watching because they know what's coming up next. Uh, yeah, you can produce a schedule and tell folks on a schedule what's coming. But, you know, we're watching a show. Who wants to go look at a schedule and find out what's coming next? I would much rather have it be served up to me. I mean, would you rather run down to the store and buy a quart of ice cream, or would you rather have somebody bring you your ice cream? That's what I'm talking about, bringing the ice cream, bringing the ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one of the changes I would like to see in this Playout controller. Something else I'd like to see in the Playout controller that it's a, it's not, I'm not clear now if this is there or if it's about to be there or if it's not there yet is the ability to tell um, the, to embed a command in the place of a file, to list a, a file, um, so that, how to, how to say this, so that the playout controller will, will actually do something else, like go to a secondary um, playout controller. So you might have, let's say, uh, a, a series of 10 videos that you're going to show over the next 10 hours, each one being an hour, hour piece. 
Um, but you realize, oh my gosh, I've already got this preset. I don't want to disturb it, but I'd like to make a change um, in the, between the fourth and the fifth hour because I want to insert uh, some more content that I think is more pertinent uh, at that point. So I would like the ability to go in and, and add a line, you know, move everything else down and add this line and say, instead of playing the next file, I want you to go over here and play this playlist. And when you're done playing this playlist, come back to this original playlist. And that either that or have the ability to edit live. The problem with editing live is, eh, you screw it up, your whole live thing is, has gone. Uh, obviously, you can't plan for every possible negative outcome and, uh, and try to fix it in advance. But, you know, the more you can, the, the better and easier uh, software like that begins to come. Uh, Mike is, is in the chat room saying that, uh, that he thinks you can do that now with VidBlaster's API. I think he's talking about inserting, inserting graphics. And I think that the, the element that's missing is the ability to, to do timing. Um, in the current playout module, or excuse me, playout controller, and when you tell a file to play, it plays. Um, and you, you can't interrupt it kind of after the fact and tell something to appear. Um, I don't know that we've got control time-wise on that, although I could be wrong. I was wrong before. Um, in fact, <laughs> in fact I, I get wrong. I get wrong a lot of times. Um, yeah, and we want to... Welcome some of the guys that have just showed up in the chat room. Glad to see you. Glad to have you guys. Glad you could, could make it through the snowstorms and, uh, and be there in time, uh, in time for the show. So, uh, you know, register your, your desires on the Playout server, uh, Playout controller, excuse me, Playout controller. It, it's, it's actually not even on the module list. Uh, you'll have to go to the view list, and it's right there. I think it's on the view list. Let's see. View... Yeah, play out. And uh, at some point in the future, we, we may experiment with going 24-7 on some video and seeing what happened. It, 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 it can be fun. But right now, if, if you want to watch anything that we've done in the past, you've got to go to YouTube. All of our stuff is on YouTube. Um, I don't think we've hit 100 shows yet, but we probably will next summer. Um, and I haven't been numbering the shows. It's kind of, it is what it is. Um, you can tell what the older ones were. They, they're the ones that, that, that didn't look quite as good. Um, but a hat, hat tip to all the folks that have helped out here with, with graphics, uh, the background graphics, foreground graphics, the, uh, the, the, the promo, excuse me, the, the, uh, the intro and the outro stuff. Yep. All right, let's see. What do we got here? Um, Coming up in the future on that VidBlaster guy, uh, still I'm still announcing it because I still believe that it's going to happen. But uh, but Alan Bunt, the king of VidBlaster macros, will will be on at some future date. Bless his heart, you know I got to break Alan away from from working, and uh, and he's promised to put together a, a video that shows how he uses macros to basically automate his entire church service now. Alan's got a unique situation with his church. He's the organist, but he doesn't play the organ. Um, so basically, he cues up pre-recorded organ music and plays that during the service, but he also manages the, the broadcast of the service. So he's got a couple of, of uh, remote control cameras and a VidBlaster setup. But when you're wearing multiple hats like that, you got to have help with automation. And that's what he's doing. So that'll be coming up on a, on a future VidBlaster guy. We're about out of time for this segment. If you're watching us live, hang around for the uh, intermission. There's, uh, there's, there's champagne and, uh, and hors d'oeuvres in the lobby uh, during the intermission, and then we'll get on with our next segment uh, of Streaming Idiots. If you're, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, we're releasing this show on, on Wednesday, um, March 11th, but we'll be re uh, releasing the Streaming Idiots on uh, Friday, March 13th. So we'll invite you to tune back in on that. I'm Tom Sinclair, that VidBlaster guy. It's been a treat to be with you. If you have questions about VidBlaster and you think I can help, shoot me an email, tom at thatvidblasterguy.com. 
Um, and if you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. That way you'll get a note whenever we post a new show, and we'll continue to do that. So we'll send you out. Uh, hopefully, if I've got my outro ready, uh, we can do that. And we'll see you next time.